Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we are learning how to draw clothes in your portraits, which is the most difficult part if you ask me. If you have a pretty face, pretty hair, but then your clothing is not realistic enough, then your portrait is not going to be powerful enough. Today we will draw together a jacket, a sweater, and a sweatshirt with wrinkles and two laces, black lace and white lace. How do we draw them? We will learn together. This is a new episode of Art Mastery Coffee series. If you haven't watched the other ones before, I'm putting the playlist up here so you can enjoy. If you would like to draw with me in real time, then you can visit my Patreon website, patreon.com slash I narrate all my videos in detail so that you can understand the tips and techniques step by step. All the materials I used, I listed them in the description part. And if you're ready now, we can draw our clothes. In order to draw realistic clothing detail, we need a good sketch outlining where the shadows and highlights are going to be. It should also include the texture details that you want to draw, just like this sketch. And this is how I can draw these textures right now on the sweater. Texture details here include the kneaded area in the sweater, the velvety lined texture in the collar of the jacket or the coat, whatever you call, and they need to be entered with detail. You can enter these details with your charcoal pencil and with your kneaded eraser. Of course, your blending stump is a great helper as well. Like the face, the clothing has shadows, midtones, and highlights too. Especially the areas that fold or drape have darkest to lightest gray transition. This includes working with multiple layers, of course. Highlights can be created with stick eraser, just like you see now. The midtone transitions can be given with graphite pencils by applying more to less pressure, depending on where the light is coming from. For the darkest shadows, I used soft charcoal first and I realized it was really hard to get any detail. So I changed it to medium charcoal and it worked just fine. For the areas that are folded, I highly recommend you to blend with tissue and shade with your paintbrush to create smooth transitions between shadows, midtones, and highlights. With my paintbrush, I just dipped it into charcoal dust and I applied it into the shadows and then midtoned areas. The woolen texture of sweater can be given with your eraser just like this. You just need a darker background and your stick eraser. Just like flying hair, you just add those tiny little lines of wool on those backgrounds. The color of the jacket that you are about to see here has the same structure that what all the other colors have. The triangle, the shadow underneath the triangle area and the folding parts. This color is particularly thick so we will need to use highlights, midtones to give that thickness. I used my charcoal pencils in the collar area and just blended them with a cotton tip to get the midtones. There are so many button types. For this one, I added the highlights around it and the darkest circles around it too to give the realistic look. For the highlights there in the button, because it was difficult to get in with my eraser, I used white gel pen as well. Sweatshirts are easier to handle unless you have a different pattern on them. There are two major things about them, drapery and folds and the collar.
For the drapery and folds, the major thing is to define where the darkest shadows are and draw them first, then decide on the most highlighted areas and how many different tones of mid-tones you need to fill in between. Define in the shadows by dipping my blending stump in charcoal dust and applying it in the darkest parts of the folds was a good idea because it didn't leave a sharp line that takes away from realism. Here you see I am adding the charcoal dust with my blending stump in those lines and it gives a much better result than a pencil would. I think I did at least six layers for this. For the sweatshirt collar, you can use your stick eraser first to create vertical lines in the collar that are placed in equal intervals. Then you go in with your H pencil to follow those highlighted areas exactly the same way. For the stitches around the collar, you can use the excessive charcoal in your blending stump and follow the line with tiny circular motions. Of course, after I put all those lines, I blend with my tissue. Key to the black lace is a soft H-tone gray base and then very dark patterns on that base. If you want really dark results and catch fine details, I highly recommend sharpened medium charcoal for those lace patterns. After drawing your pattern, Blend with your tissue once or twice, very lightly, not many times though. This will create a light gray base already. After that, all you need to do is grab your 2H or H pencil and draw very light parallel lines and then draw another set of parallel lines that cross them, creating mini squares or diamonds in that case. Then you can go over the darkest parts with your blending stump. Here you see that I am still creating the pattern with my charcoal pencil. Those lines are created with circular motions if you pay attention, they are not straight lines. After I finish drawing this little pattern, I'm gonna go over it with my tissue and lightly blend it. The reason I'm going in with my blending stump first before the tissue is to decrease the amount of charcoal that I'm going to smudge. Here I'm doing the parallel lines and I'm going to over other direction to create those squares. Now it looks like lace. For white lace, you need a light gray base that you can create with B or H pencil, whatever you prefer. So you blend it with a the tissue, then you erase those patterns with your stick eraser. So when you erase on that gray surface, you already see the pattern very easily. To even make it more pop out, we go around the pattern with our H pencil or 2B pencil, whatever you use to create the base and we create some tiny shadows so that it looks more realistic. You see with my pencil, I'm creating those shadows right now. After you add all these shadow details and when you're finished with your eraser, please don't do any blending. Leave it as it is. So these were the four things that are difficult to draw in my opinion in a portrait. 
I hope you find this video helpful. I try to tackle the most difficult ones for you. If you want a 4 hour long narrated full tutorial, visit my Patreon website, patreon.com slash ejegurlash. I just wanted to say that if you are doing commission work, please make sure that you increase your price a little bit for difficult clothing details such as lace because they are definitely going to take more time than a sweatshirt or just a simple t-shirt. I would just like to make sure that you get what you deserve. If you are still watching this, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. See you in my next video. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you like my videos, please don't forget to subscribe and visit my website, ajagurlar.com. Stay with art and love.